Hey Summit, this is Edward and I have Joe Fields here with us today and uh, just wanted to kind of visit with you Joe this morning or this afternoon, I'm not even sure what it is right now. Uh, this last Sunday I, I received some emails from you guys. Joe preached a message on his story and we're in this middle of this story and so we wanted to bring some clarity around a um, question that many of you had and I know some of you wrote me emails and have talked to me and there's probably some of you out there that that didn't. You, you haven't written us anything. You haven't reached out to Joe or me, but you're probably thinking in the back of your mind, hey, I wonder what he meant by that. And so, Joe, I'm just going to kind of just flop it out there, just be real quick here mm -hmm. and get to the point because we don't want to preach a whole sermon uh, in this. But you made the statement that your mission, your life mission is to get your wife to heaven. And uh, Joe, do you really have that ability to get your wife to heaven? I, I don't possess the ability to get my wife to heaven or save her soul. That I, What I do is I kind of divide the concept of salvation into three parts. There's the source of salvation, which would be ex expressed in Ephesians 2, that we're saved by God's grace. And I believe we are saved by God's grace. I, I can't work for it. I can't uh, put my wife in a position where she has to work for it. I can't get her to heaven. That's, yeah. That is not... And under that concept of God being the source of salvation, God is the source of her salvation. Obviously, she was saved before she met me right, right. because she's the one that led me to Christ. So yeah. so uh, what I'm going to talk about in a little bit is the distinctive role of a husband in marriage. But that's not uh, what I'm talking about here is that is that God is the source of her salvation by his grace. The plan would be salvation through Jesus, that God... Um, Acts 4 talks about how in no other name is there salvation, that Jesus would be the plan. So we have the source is God, the plan is through Jesus. Yep. But what I mean by that statement is that I am part of the process that God uses to save our souls. An example of that would be Acts chapter 2, verse 40, which says that we are to save ourselves from this crooked generation. Right. I don't believe I can save myself. God saves me. But the passage does say that. What does it mean to save yourself from a crooked generation? Mm -hmm. What I believe God is doing is he's joining us to a process of salvation that we've got to make decisions about. Mm -hmm. So the potential of the cross of Jesus and God's plan of salvation is that the whole world be saved. Yep. And we pray for that. And we pray for that. Yeah. But the process is that we've got to make decisions to accept that. So, so the ancients would call that sanctification. You and I were talking a while ago. There's a responsibility. That yes. You and I have a responsibility exactly. in our walk with Christ to holiness. Yes. That's right. And so the ancients called it uh, sanctification. What you and I were talking about earlier is just that responsibility. You and I have a responsibility, not, not in our salvation, but in walking out our salvation. And, and, Would you say that? And putting our hand in God's hand in the process. Yes, yes. That's our responsibility. Walking with him. We walk with him. We are engaged in the mm -hmm. process. It's not just God doing it all for us. We have a personal responsibility. Yes. That's why the to passage, be holy. To be holy. And yes. that's why the passage says, save yourself from, from this generation. 1 Timothy 4.16, I, I mean, think you have yeah, that I got, one. Let me read that. 1 Timothy 4.16 says this. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Okay, so the process is expanded that I not only have a responsibility in my own salvation, but I have a responsibility in the salvation of other people. Yes. In the process, not the source. Right. I'm not the savior of the world. God is, uh -huh. through Jesus, using a process to save other people. That's what the church is yes. about, yes. is being involved in the mission uh -huh. of saving the world. So in that sense, if I'm called to make sure that I save myself uh -huh. and others, the first others in a Christian marriage that I would focus on is my wife. Yeah. I, I need to live, watch your life and your teaching, live in a way that leads your wife towards heaven. That's really Points the goal. Points her to heaven. Points Walks her to heaven. Her. Yes. Point her to Christ. Every how you yes. want to say it, those yes. are all synonyms. But the goal of a Christian husband is to 
point his wife towards heaven and get on that path and Andre. lead the way in it. Yep. He's he's a, he's leading that. He's yep. not he's not basically uh, taking the role of her savior. He's just participating in that process. Yes. Yeah. So he's not taking the role as her savior. He's not taking the role right. of as her savior. Right. He's he's engaged in the process with God. Yep. To do that. And she is engaged in the process with God in your life, exactly. walking with you as well. She answers to first Timothy four sixteen the same way I do. Okay. She's to watch what she is as a wife because it will save her. And it will save the people that listen to her. Yep. Who's me? That's good. So That's it, good. it goes both ways. So it's not just it, it's not just the whole process of a husband and wife. It's it's in our influence on everybody. Exactly. Uh, and, and this is this is made where you may grow up in a in a um, tradition uh, called evangelism. You know, we yeah. we use that, but this is really kind of the heart of that evangelism that we're talking about. Is that you and I play a part in people coming to Christ. And if we live in such a way that turns people off of the message of Christ, we own that. Yes. And so that's that's kind of... Just as strongly as I embrace God as the source of salvation. Yep, Jesus is the plan of salvation. I am part of the process that God uses yep. to bring the salvation of the Responsibility, world. that's yeah. good. Yeah. So now, the, the, other, the other aspect of that would be found in Hebrews chapter 11. Okay. In verse 7, listen right. to what this says. It says, It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Okay, so two aspects in this passage that we know belong to God alone. Nobody but God can judge and condemn. And yet God says that because Noah was doing the right thing, he condemned everybody else. Mm. It's almost as if God were looking down going, I know I'm not being too hard on you. Look at my guy Noah there. Mm -hmm. He shows that we're capable of, you're capable of doing what God's asked you to do. Yeah. So by his lifestyle, he condemned the world. Although we would all say God is the only judge. Yep. God enjoined his life to the process, even of condemnation. But on the flip side of it, it says Noah built an ark to save his family. Who saved Noah? In the source, God did. Mm -hmm. In the plan, it was an ark. Yeah. But you would not say that Noah's work building an ark is what saved his family. Yeah. Because God could sink that boat. Yeah. God is the source of our salvation, but we are engaged in the process of saving ourselves and saving others. Yeah. Specifically our wives. Yeah. If, if you're a Christian husband. So I think the distinctive Role. This is good. This is good right here. The distinctive characteristic of a Christian marriage. Now don't miss this. Is men are leading the way towards heaven. Yeah. That's the distinctive. In a worldly marriage, the guy provides. He gives security. Not much he, difference. He loves. There's almost no difference at all. Mm -hmm. But if the if you see the distinctive difference between a Christian marriage and a worldly marriage. The guy in front leading the way is saying, Eternity. I am headed for eternity, eternity. and I'm going to take my wife with me. I am going to leave my kids. My I'm, I'm going to take, yes. I'm going to put more pressure on me yeah. to get my family there than I do on my wife. Yeah. So I totally understand why, in the secular world, wives and a lot of people get upset yeah. when a man claims that position because. Frankly, a lot of a lot of us don't do a great job with it, yeah. and until we learn better, we don't accept that goal. But my role is to lead towards heaven and get my wife there. And so let's bring that out just a bigger statement. Our role as Christians, our mission as Christians, is not only what we're talking here, marriage. But listen, when I get there, I want to take as many people exactly. with me that I can. That's our mission. And so I know some of you probably heard Joe sound like Joe put himself in that place, and that's why we wanted to bring some clarity. I don't get to vote on my <laughs> wife going to heaven. Yeah. 
She, in fact, she'll do a better job getting there by herself than Amen. She would. Amen. <laughs> put me there. So let's let's bring it back into the New Testament. We talked about Noah in Romans ten. It says this because I think this is foundational uh, for for so many of you guys that had some of these questions. It says this in Romans ten thirteen. You're familiar with this. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yep. That's anyone. Salvation is for everyone. It's not just for th these guys sitting in here. It's for everyone. And then he goes on to say, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? So there's that responsibility. And how can they believe in him if they never heard about him? Here Now that's our responsibility. That's okay. Uh, and now, uh, and, and how can they hear about him unless someone tells them in other words at some point we got to speak we got to we got to we tell have to them. engage the process yeah and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent now we got to do something here's that responsibility here's that yeah. process in that that is why the scriptures say how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news right that's when good. we say to god i am partnered with you in the mission of leading people to heaven, we are essentially partnered with God in saving the soul. That's good. Soul. That's good. That's what I mean by I'm gonna I'm gonna do everything I can to save my wife or to lead my wife towards heaven. Yeah. Is I believe I put my hand in God's hand to say, what do you need me to do mm -hmm. with your daughter yeah. to get her to heaven? Yeah. And that's how I I don't believe that a husband should be a boss. Or a sergeant. That's not what we're asked to lead in. We don't, it's not a telling position. Yeah. It is a sacrificing position. Yeah. With a view towards participating in the process. In eternity. And I think that's I think that's where some of the confusion came Sunday uh, around that. And and I think this is good that we have this conversation uh, that to understand where salvation comes from. It's God. The process is Jesus. But we do have a responsibility in this walk, guys. Uh, to, to put our hand, as Joe said, in God's hand and to walk with him in that. And, and so that's, I, I understood what you were saying, uh, but I think being able to kind of flesh that out, that we do have a responsibility in this journey. Uh, if we didn't have any responsibility, we didn't have any mission, we say it all the time, we're here on mission. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, the mission gets done because we're doing it. That's right. Uh, and God empowers us to do that. And so... Uh, I hope this has um, helped you today. And we didn't want to go on for 35, 40 minutes, hour and 10 minutes uh, uh, to, to this. We really wanted to make this as concise and clear as we could. Now, here's, here's what I would say to you. If you have listened to this video and you still have questions, I would encourage yeah. you, reach out to us. Uh, Joe, what's your email? Uh, jcfields75 at gmail.com. Say that one more time. JCFields75 at gmail.com. And what we'll do is we'll put that in the comments below when we you know, put this video up in just a few minutes. Feel free to reach out to him. Uh, yeah. Feel free to reach out to me. My email is edward at summitheightsfellowship.com. Uh, you can call me here at the office and uh, we can talk that way. We're not afraid of questions. We're not afraid of uh, preachers saying things sometimes that um, we're like, that gum. Um, wow. So, uh, we're men, and uh, we're, we're not going to always say it perfectly. We're not always going to do it perfectly. Um, but, hey, we love you, Summit. And uh, I know this guy loves you. Uh, I, I love serving with him as an elder. So feel free. If you still have questions and you still want to uh, uh, kind of get some clarity around that, reach out to us. We, we would love to visit with you. You got anything else? Love you guys. Hey, we love you. Uh, share this on all your platforms uh, to, so people get the word out. We'll be mentioning this again in our weekly update this week and on Sunday so that people uh, that don't have social media uh, won't see this. They can hear about it, and then maybe we can point them to it. We love you. Have a great week.